Phyllis Kirk's early Hollywood career was very turbulent. She constantly auditioned for roles but found herself dumped from most projects due to her height. There was even a point where she thought of taking her own life by falling off a cliff. But there was only one thing that kept her from doing it. Keep watching to find out. But before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below saying I subscribe and we'll do our best to reply to your comment personally. How did Phyllis Kirk get into acting? Kirk was born on September 18, 1927 in Plainsfield, New Jersey. The daughter of a salesman and a teacher, she was the only child in her family to attend college. When she was just two years old, she contracted polio. Then, according to her autobiography, she developed kyphosis, an abnormal curvature of the spine. This curvature made it difficult for her to sit up straight and would affect her acting career in the future as well. She graduated from Vassar College with a degree in English and American Literature. After that, Kirk spent her first years of teaching at St. Joseph's Academy, Morristown, New Jersey. But while working as a teacher during World War II, Kirk became interested in acting. At the recommendation of a friend, she auditioned for a play called The Lady from Dubuque, where she played the role of a nun. Kirk later called this experience the beginning of my career. So did she end up becoming successful? After playing in The Lady from Dubuque, Kirk moved to California with $400 in her pocket and worked a regular job there for three months. After countless auditions, she finally started in films. She made $200 a week and appeared in a few low-budget movies. Kirk recognized that people began to talk to her, and the more people started liking her, the more money she earned. Finally, there came a point where Kirk was making $1,500 a week. At that time, the movie theater industry was dominated by male stars. Although there were several exceptional female stars, Kirk began her career in 1947 after having already appeared in several stage productions. Her early films included her 1948 signing with Universal were in this genre. Kirk had several opportunities to gain critical and commercial success, but she never achieved the level of stardom enjoyed by her contemporaries. After her association with Universal, Kirk made several films for other studios, including movies with Will Rogers and Douglas Fairbanks Jr., and a series with Buston Keaton. Unfortunately, her career was interrupted several times by her illness. In the early 1950s, Kirk appeared in a couple of westerns, often with Glenn Ford. She also performed in a Broadway revival of Rogers and Hart's The Boys from Syracuse. In 1941, Kirk appeared in a Broadway production of Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II's Showboat. She continued her career in Broadway theater and on television. In the beginning, most of Kirk's screen roles were bland, but in 1953, she won her big shot when she got offered the part of Vincent Price's scarred manic sculptor in House of Wax. To an actress who wasn't getting much screen time, getting offered the part of the intended victim of Vincent Price's scarred manic sculptor in House of Wax could indeed be career-making. The 1953 remake of The Mystery of the Wax Museum, which had Faye Ray in the Kirk part, was one of the best 3D movies. Kirk turned down her agent's advice to take the part, telling him she'd rather chew off my right arm than play that role. But Warner Brothers, to which she had signed a contract, told her she would get suspended from the studio if she didn't accept the role. So Kirk had no choice. In 1954, Phyllis Kirk starred in her two most memorable films, River Beat and The Woman Opposite, both good B pictures with Frank Sinatra. It was a time she had secured her place as one of the best actresses in the British film industry. She had also recently decided to throw away her Firebrand's hairstyle for something more sophisticated. However, her most notable television role was opposite Peter Lawford in The Thin Man, which aired from 1957 to 1959. Here, Kirk and Lawford played Nick and Nora Charles. A newspaper columnist described what distinguished Kirk's role in the program, saying that it's her brains that keeps her flying high on the Thin Man series. Kirk worked over 40 films throughout her career, including Monkey Business and The Nun's Story. She received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress in The Nun's Story and won a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress in the film The Awful Truth. But for years, Kirk was hiding a dark secret. People talk about acting in movies as being a glamorous experience, but to Kirk, it was the most demoralizing thing. She said it was miserable, and all she wanted to do sometimes was go home and sleep. 
I'll never forget one time, she continued, when I was up on stage and the director said cut, the audience was laughing, the director then told her she was too short and ugly to be playing the role. This devastated the actress to the point where she considered taking her own life. She recalled being put down by the studio and was homesick, lonely, and miserable. There came a point when Kirk wished she could just die from her illness. Her dark thoughts got so bad that she once walked up to a cliff and thought about jumping off. There was nobody around, she was all alone. But on the verge of jumping, a scary thought came to mind. She realized people would come looking for her and imagine all the newspapers talking about her in such a negative way. Kirk realized that it would be such a shame if the media printed something like that. But what scared her the most was that she didn't want to be remembered as the crazy actress who took her own life. But Kirk's relationship was more tragic. At age 26, Phyllis Kirk married Hollywood film star Henry Fonda. But the marriage was troubled from the beginning. Henry Fonda was brilliant, handsome, and charismatic, but he had been suffering from bouts of depression for years. Together, Henry and Phyllis had one child, Dennis. But the marriage was unraveling. Unhappy and alone, Harry decided to move to Los Angeles and devote himself to acting full-time. Phyllis was devastated by his decision, but there was nothing she could do about it. Meanwhile, Henry had begun a successful career in Hollywood. He was in films with some of the biggest movie stars of the 1940s and 1950s, such as Betty Davis, Clark Gable, Frank Sinatra, and Gregory Peck. By 1953, Henry Fonda had become a leading man in the film industry, but the following year, things changed drastically. In 1954, Henry Fonda played a supporting role in On the Waterfront, one of the great films of Hollywood's golden age. But later that year, his acting career was dealt a severe blow. On March 29, 1955, Henry Fonda was filming a scene on a bridge near San Francisco. He was about 40 feet from another car when, without warning, the driver swerved into him. The collision threw Henry off the bridge, over the bridge railing, and into the San Francisco Bay. Fonda survived, but the accident was devastating. On the other hand, Kirk got married to television producer and screenwriter Warren Bush. Their marriage was announced in the press in early 1967 and lasted until he died in 1992. Do you think Phyllis Kirk made the right decision to become an actress? Let me know in the comments section below and check out the following video in this series.